Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Rob, and in this episode, we're going to continue the theme of using some of the scraps that I had in my last video where we made the air dam for the splitter. So I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to keep this. Um, this is something I made with some pieces from Home Depot. If you haven't seen that video, just it's the one before this one. I ended up ordering a aftermarket lip from Amazon. Um, decent little lip, it was like 200 bucks, I think. But it was like three inches. This is four inches and the lip just took up too much real estate of the splitter. And then on the sides here, it actually overhang the splitter here and it just, it wasn't gonna work. So I bolted this down and um, you know, I have some scraps here and we're going to work on the actual hood vent. We have some scraps left over and I was thinking, hmm, what could I use this for? As air flows through, you know, through the grill here, through the radiator, the faster we go, the more air mass, it builds up a lot of high pressure. Underneath the hood, the air has nowhere to go. It's just kind of going wherever it can. I noticed, especially on track at speed, the hood will start to kind of lift up and shake and stuff. That means there's a lot of high pressure underneath the hood. So I put this vent to help kind of get rid of some of that high pressure and allow the air to kind of flow in and out you know, let the oil cooler work better, great air, and so on. But I'm thinking, hmm, I can kind of use that same air dam design and build kind of, some people call it like a, a wicker bill or a gurney flap right here in front. And in theory, as air slowing through, you know, over the hood, it creates high pressure in front of this lip and then low pressure on the back side of it. So that low pressure will allow this vent in theory to work better. So I can just pull more air out of there. If you guys have been following along, you know that these GR86s on track, right hand corners, high G, start the pickup. From what we know as of right now, I have the Tomei baffle plate, um, oil cooler, uh, run thicker oil and slightly overfill that to help combat the issue. So I'm hoping with this, I can make the oil cooler radiator and stuff more efficient by, you know, allowing more air in and letting that, that air to come out of this vent um, with ease. So that's the goal of the theory. I'm going to kind of take some scrap, tape it to one side of the vent. I'm going to turn on this, you know, high pressure fan and I'm gonna get some string. We're gonna tape it on this side versus that side. And we're just gonna see what it does. And um, if it works, I'll drill out these rivets, take the shape of the vent, and we'll put the little gurney flap on. So let's find out. So here's that piece of scrap metal. I just put some automotive tape on it. We're just gonna do this side here so we can compare the two. Take that down. Nice. Now this is inch and a half. I'm not going to use um, something this tall to stick. Um, this is just for testing. So next, I didn't have any string or yarn or anything, but my daughter's little bike with training wheels has those little these little things off the handlebars. I just cut a couple. Don't tell her. And we're going to use this for the test. So we're gonna tape that down there and I'm gonna tape these, same thing, on this side. So in theory, air should almost, as I turn the fan on, air should, it wants to stay attached to the car. So it's, this should almost kind of lay flat where I'm hoping this, the air, believe it or not, should, these little stringy things should stand up where these will lay fl flat. Let's find out. So I'm gonna turn the fan on, just speed one. 
Wow, look at that. So I don't know how well you can hear me, but hopefully you can see it where these are technically trying to stand up and that's laying flat. Now I'm gonna turn the fan up a little bit higher. Yeah, so same thing. So a lot of high pressure here. And as you can tell, when I put my hand here, it really wants to go forward. So there you go, that's uh, science for you. So you can easily tell those are laying flat and that's they're shooting straight up. So this is just airflow over the top of the hood. Imagine air going through the radiator and all that high pressure escaping. So pretty neat. I like how it's uh, working. All right, so that was pretty neat. Um, I'm glad that kind of worked out. I figured it would, but I uh, wanted to test it before I kind of build something and put it on the vent here. So now, like I said, I'm not going to use, this is a inch and a half tall. This is only an inch. So in theory, it should do the same thing. Probably a little less drag, I would think but same principle. Again, we're just trying to get that airflow out. That hot air. More, air, more air in, more out. So I'm just gonna kinda take some measurements here. I'm going to cut it and then cut it again in the middle to get, cause this vent is curved. I'll drill some holes and then Rivet it on there and uh, we should be good. All right, so this is a little scrap that I had just over 20 inches, 20 and a half. So I put center at 10 and a quarter. Looked like it was gonna fit there pretty well. Um, same thing, drill a hole, cut with the jigsaw and um, get this to take its shape. Mark the holes, drill out the rivets, rivet it back on. Cut it, slight little angle, and it actually looks pretty decent. So now I'm going to drill out a couple of these rivets, mark my holes, rivet them on. I I, um, I like it. I think it looks good. I'm even going to keep a, uh, you know, going to keep that uh, price tag on there. All right, so as I'm drilling out the rivets, there's a little washer on the bottom of them. And what I'm hoping to do, since I uh, only have two hands, I'm gonna put a little bit of tape and hopefully uh, catch the washer so they don't fall in between my Swiss tracks and I'm not able to get them or find them. So hopefully it works. If not, I got some more, but um, again, tape them up. The little washers here. This one's gonna be a pain since it's under here. And this last one. So, all right, let's drill them out.
Oh no, it's just spinning. Uh, I don't know if I did this that good. I think I need a bigger drill bit. Drilled out the three rivets, got it pretty close to the shape. Um, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just kind of smooth out the edges, clean all that up. So if I'm ever washing a car, like I don't wanna nick it and cut myself. Time to rivet it on. Got my rivet, got the washer, got my custom work. This one's gonna be fun because I can't really reach it under here. It is done. I couldn't, we couldn't film a whole lot because I needed my wife to kind of either hold the little washer underneath here while I, you know, was using the rivet gun and vice versa. This side went good, the center, not so much. And this one, it didn't grab the washer, but it stuck. I'm not gonna drill it, I'm just gonna leave it because um, it's pretty, it's on there pretty good. So we're gonna leave it like that. If I absolutely hate it, drill it out and you know, put a new rivet. So now for the real test. One, two, three. Nice. So as you can tell, these are uh, my chairs blowing around. But yeah, you can tell that these are now blowing up. Actually, the higher the uh, wicker bill, the better it is. But I'm sure there's a a drag penalty with going bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, but anyway, my goal with this, again, is really just to make this vent more efficient. If my oil temps will recover faster on track and maybe take a little bit longer to heat up. Um, mainly it's just a recovery. Maybe I can maintain slightly cooler temps with this, you know, working better than without having the little gurney flap. I'll keep you guys posted. I got a, a big track event coming up, really just to get seat time, test out the splitter, wing angle. Uh, we did new alignment and stuff, and um, see if we can hit that sub 230 at Sebring. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the track video.